Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to The Whiskey Cove. And on today's episode, we celebrate 12 months of The Whiskey Cove on YouTube and look back at all the bottles that we managed to drink through and finish off. And then we'll talk a little about if we should buy them again, just buy them once, or just pass all together. Run the video. All right then, folks, then let's get into today's video, shall we? Before we begin, if you're not a subscriber, definitely consider subscribing. I'll tell you why. It's because we're having a fantastic free giveaway. How do you enter the giveaway? Well, firstly, you have to be a subscriber. Secondly, go over to the Whiskey Cove's website. The link is down below in the description. Go over to the shop, and then you'll see the free giveaway entry. Fill out the information, and make sure you don't do any duplicates because they'll be deleted. So then you can be added into the Whiskey Cove's free giveaway. We have three bottles so far on the giveaway. We have the Old Forest the Barrels Front Single Barrel. We have the Willet for your green top. And then lastly, the Wello Antique 107. We'll, we'll be adding three bottles. We might be getting really close to the 4,000 subscriber at this point. And we'll be adding another one at 4,500 and then another one at 5,000. And then look out for the 5,000 subscriber live stream. Or you can watch it afterwards and see if you were the ones who won there. With that being said, let's get these bottles out of here. And then let's talk about the video. So, Whiskey Cove celebrates uh, about just over a year now. But I wanted to save all the bottles that I drunk through in that last year so then we can quickly review them and talk a little bit about them. So the three options we have here today is, I, I've, so I've kept all the empty bottles basically just for this video and I'll do the same next year. So the three options are, would I buy, buy, buy it again? Also, which means I would definitely buy this again. I really like that, I'll definitely buy it again. Uh, one time, which is like, I would just advise you folks maybe just buy it one time. Uh, it's not a bottle that I would buy again. And then lastly, pass. So that I would just pass on this bottle all together. So with that being said, we have a shameful amount of bottles to get through. I must premise this, I'm not an alcoholic. I have a lot of friends to come around and drink whiskey with me. There's a lot, so a lot of bottles that I sadly couldn't have on this video because I usually, if we have like a party here, they might get thrown away or I'll just take them over to friends' houses as well. I generally don't keep the bottles. You're not gonna see many of the Buffalo Trace single barrel picks and some other stuff that you might expect to be on this video. With that being said, let's get into bottle number one. Uh, this is the one that I smashed before. Uh, we talked a little bit about this on a store hall so I definitely want to get this out of the way because it's all shards on the top so this is the original gold bar double castrate bourbon whiskey finished in wine casks coming in 92 proof 46% ABV we believe this is a uh, uh, this is from Texas, so we believe Balcones maybe. I really like this whiskey and I would buy this again actually. I think this surprised me just how good it was. It had some really nice Texas sweet and spicy pot style vibes to it. And I think for around 50, 60 dollars what I paid for it, I would definitely buy this again. Let me just get this out of the way here. So that was a buy again. Uh, next up, we have the Knob Creek Single Barrel Reserve 9 here. This is also going to be a buy again. I would definitely buy these again. Excellent value for money. I think you pay like $50 to $60 for them. You get that 9-year age statement. I believe this is the one that I got from the distillery there in Kentucky, which is the best one that I've had to date here. So buy again. Staying with Knob Creek, we have a Knob Creek 9 here whiskey. So definitely, definitely buy this again. About 25 bucks for a nine-year age stated 50% ABV or 100 proof whiskey. Every day of the week you buy this again, you maybe have a little bit more spicier notes with this guy, which is the typical Jim Beam character. So buy again. Next up, we have the Maker's Mark BEP. This is the last of the, uh, the wood finishing series from Maker's Mark. 2023, cost me about 70 bucks. I would not buy this again, actually. Uh, and I probably wouldn't even buy it as a one time. I think Maker's Mark Castrant is better than this one. Let me down a little bit. I thought this was gonna be a really great way to finish off the wood finishing series. Would not buy again. This is a pass. Next up, we're going to Jack Daniels and we're going to the straight Tennessee rye whiskey finished in high toast barrels. So this is about 40 bucks there. It is a small bowl. Definitely, definitely, definitely buy this again. I didn't do a review on it just because it's not so widely available, but I have talked a little bit about it before. Definitely buy again. Russell's Reserve Single Barrel. This is an 11 year one from Argonaut Wine and Liquor. Cost me about 63 bucks. Definitely buy these again. This wasn't the best one I've ever had, but definitely a solid addition. Buy again. Going back to Maker's Mark, and we have the Maker's Mark BRT02 from 2022. Buy again. Definitely buy this again. I'm, look, I'm actively looking for some of these if I can find them on shelves for MSRP because this isn't coming back. This reminded me of like Old Forester, uh, Jack Daniels barrel proof type juice. So good, so tasty. A dessert in a bottle. Buy again. 
Speaking of Old Forester, Old Forester single barrel, barrel strength. This is a pretty easy one, buy again. Uh, this was from Total Beverage, coming in at 64.3% ABV. These are excellent value for money, even at the price that they've been raised up to for about $90. So don't sleep on these, buy again. Uh, Bernheim Seven Year Wheat Whiskey. This is about $30 and like does carry that seven year age statement. Yeah, I'd buy this again. I was pleasantly pleased, pleased with this. I think this is a solid bottle. I think that for the price, there's not really much that can match it out there with that age statement there as well. Buy again. Uh, next up, we have Sazerac Rye Straight Rye Whiskey. This is a really great bottle for like someone who's starting out and wants to get into rye a little bit more. This is quite cheap if you can find it for MSRP for about $25 to $30. You know, you're going to get a Sazerac Rye uh, from the Sazerac Umbrella. So, you know, quite a cool bottle to have on the shelf there as well. It's a definite buy again. Uh, we go to Wales and we go with Pendarin, and this is the myth release here. Raisins, apples, sultanas, dates, beautiful expressions bourbon finished, uh, so it's finished in Buffalo Trace bourbon barrels, still has some of those notes. Uh, for me, definitely buy again, about 50 to $60. You can definitely find them in the US, they are around the place. I would buy that again. Ah, Hidden Barn, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, batch one. So I can't speak to some of the newer batches, but this one is a pass from me. I did not like this. This had uh, just too many yeasty, bready notes. It just didn't quite feel complete. Uh, I know that some people liked it maybe a little bit more, but it was just not good. Sorry, this is a pass from me. Uh, Midwinter Night's Dram. This is going to be Act 9, Scene 3. My favorite Midwinter Night's Dram for a very long time. This is a buy again. However, this year's release, or the last year's, 10 was not so good. That would probably have just been a pass. However, this one was fantastic and I'm very hopeful of this year's coming out soon. Dickel Column Still collaboration with Leopold Bros. So you can still see this on shop shelves, shop shelves, and it's been out for like over a year at this point. Uh, people are just trying to dump it as best as they can because people are just not paying $100 for this product. Uh, it caught me off guard. I didn't know that I was paying $100. I was buying other things at the time. I'm like, was stupid enough that I didn't look at the price. Uh, this is a pass from me. I didn't think it was that good. I think it was massively overpriced and uh, not a collaboration I was necessarily interested in, but I thought it was gonna be like 40 bucks. So pass from me. Uh, Hunter and Gatherer. Uh, aged 15 years. So this started as a really spiky, high proof whiskey that I just couldn't get in. It got a little better towards the end with like some pineapple notes, uh, but this is a pass. So I'm not gonna buy it again. I think there's better value for money out there. And even came with a free moth as well, which is stuck in the bottle. <laughs> but yeah, that's a pass for me on that one. I know the other Hunter, Hunter and Gavra, the first one was pretty good, but not that one. This is the other Jack Daniels Straight Tennessee Rye Whiskey, but this one is finished in high toast maple barrels, much like the high toast oak barrel this is a definite buy again. Some beautiful, beautiful notes, and I hope they come out with a regular standard version that we can all get of this guy here. That's a buy again. Uh, we are going back to Dickel, and this is the Dickel Tennessee Bald in Bond Whiskey. This is the one that is aged, uh, I think, 11 years. Yeah, this is the 11 year one. Uh, one time. I would say buy this as a one time bottle, uh, and then if you like it, then you can make the decision. Uh, I wouldn't buy this again personally, but that's not a pass. This is just a one time. So buy one time, see what it's like. Uh, High West Double Rye, and this is the maple syrup finished. Uh, this is the four-year age, uh, four-year-old maple syrup. So they take their regular uh, double rye and they finish it for an extra four years. If you can find the four-year one, definitely buy again. If you can find any of the High West picks that kind of sound nice to you, then it's a buy again. And for me, as you can tell, I really like High West, so a definite buy again. Back to Jack Daniels, and we are going with a Tennessee taster, and this is the Barrel Reunion Straight Tennessee Whiskey finished in red wine barrels. So this is a this is a pass. This is a pass from me. Didn't like this whatsoever. Probably the worst juice from Jack Daniels I've ever tried, uh, and I think I paid a ridiculously uh, like fifty, sixty dollars for this, and I definitely should have. Hard pass on the red wine finish one for me. Uh, we are going local in Colorado. We are going with Copper Sky. This is the five-year high bourbon rye whiskey, and this is coming in around about 50% ABV. I got this in a three-pack with some other bottles as well. Uh, I would say this is a one-time. I will buy this as a one-time. Uh, this other stuff I would buy multiple times, but this Copper Sky, probably one time. Pretty standard. You just have it, you enjoy it, you move on to another bottle. Thanks, Copper Sky.
and staying with Copper Sky, and this is gonna be the Copper Sky Wheated Bourbon, also five year old, and I would buy this again. I preferred this one over the five year high rye bourbon, and I think maybe that's why uh, I would buy that once and I would buy this again. So if you find any of these Copper Sky green labeled ones, definitely buy them, it's a very tasty bottle. And I don't know how they do it, but there's like no youthful notes in there, so buy again. We are going to Heaven Hill, and that is because we are going Henry McKenna aged 10 years, the bottled in bond. Uh, I think this is just about buy again. Uh, and I've spoken about this quite widely on the channel. Out of every 10 bottles of Henry McKenna that you'll buy, three will be great, excellent whiskey. Another three would just be okay, and then four will just be not very good. So you might be able to hit quite fortunately. It's definitely buy again, even though prices have gone up a little bit, but it's a buy again. It's, good. it's a good enough ball, like I said. Aged 10 years, bottled in bond, and a single barrel. So you're getting a lot for your money there. Next up, we're going to Luxro, and that is the Rebel Cast Strength. So this is part of some of the distillery picks that they did. Uh, this is 60% ABV. MSRP is about $40 to $50. I would not buy this again. This is a pass. Uh, was just a little bit too proofy. Didn't have any like nice rounded notes. It was really spiky. There's a lot more better value on the money. I would probably go for like a blue note cheap joint whiskey uncut and unfiltered over this. So pass from me. Uh, Jack Daniels Triple Mash. This was about $30 MSRP, maybe a little bit more now. 700 milliliter bottle. This is a blend of bonded American single malt, rye and Tennessee whiskeys. This would be a pass from me. I, I didn't think much of it. Uh, I think there's better value on the market. Obviously, this is a unique bottle that has got a couple of different things going on. So if that tickles your fancy or something you might like, then it might be a buy from you. However, it's gonna be a pass from me. If I had the opportunity to never buy it again, I would. So pass. Uh, smoke Wagon. Uh, bottled in bond straight dry whiskey. So I did a review on this. I quite liked it. I thought it was okay. I thought it was good. I paid about 70 to 80 dollars, so it was quite high. I think one time. Just buy this as a one time. I think there's better value in something like a Sagamore Double or Oaked. But it's not to say that this isn't bad whiskey. Like I said, really enjoyed it. It's just you know you have a bottle of whiskey you like it, and then you move on to the next one and go through that kind of stages. So I would probably buy something else just because of the price. But a one time bottle buy, I think is worthy of this. Next up. Staying with Smoke Wagon, we have the Smoke Wagon straight bourbon whiskey, the kind of like the base level whiskey here. Paid about $35 for it, and I definitely would buy this again. I think this is a really great bottle of whiskey for someone who's maybe a Scotch fan or doesn't necessarily drink bourbon to get into because it has some of those herbal, smokier notes to it. I think this is an excellently priced bourbon. I think it's solid, and for, like I said, for that price, it's definite buy again. So then the next ball is gonna be Maker's Mark 46. So I've had a couple of these before in the past. However, this specific ball tasted like it was a little bit off for whatever reason. I had like a moldy, woody note. It wasn't nice at all. But Maker's Mark 46 in general for the price is good value for money. And I think I would buy it again for that price. 94% or 47% ABV, I think it's worth it. So this is a buy again for me. Next up, we have Jack Daniels Rye. We bought this for the Jack Daniels Distillery Taste Through. This is coming in at 45% ABV or 90 proof. Uh, this is a pass from me. Not necessarily saying it was bad. I think there's better value to be had out there, like the Rittenhouse or the Sazerac Rye. This was just okay. I wouldn't spend my money on it again. This is a pass from me. Going back to Maker's Mark, and we have the Maker's Mark Private Select Picks. This is 50.4.8%. This is the Stavosaurus Rex pick. If you can find any of these older Maker's Mark private selects and for MSRP, definitely get them. They've stopped doing this label now, but this is a buy again for me. If I, like I said, if I could find these, I'm definitely buying them every day at MSRP. Uh, and it also tells you kind of the same finish on the back there as well. And then lastly from Maker's Mark, we have the Maker's Mark 46 cast strength. So I would say this is a one-time ball for me, only because I like the Maker's Mark cast strength better, so there's no reason for me to buy this because they're both roughly around the same price. Those who like Maker's Mark 46, you'll probably like this bottle a lot more. So, but for me, this is just a one and done, one and done type thing. I wouldn't buy it again. Uh, we have about five bottles left. And in no particular order, we have the Tennessee Tasters Twin Blend Whiskey. This is coming in 53.5% there as well. And much like the red wine finish, this is a pass from me. Didn't live up to any expectations, a little bit too pricey. I would never buy this again, it just wasn't that good. This is a pass. Uh, Evan Williams Eggnog. We drank some of this around Christmas time, and I think I paid like 12 to 15 dollars for this. This is a blend of Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, rum and brandy. This is super tasty. 
excellent around Christmas. I would buy this again every day of the week. Absolutely delightful and dirt cheap. It is only 15 point, uh, it was only 15% alcohol, but if you like it a little bit more proof here, just chuck a little bit more of that Evan Williams bottle and bond in there and you got a little bit higher proof, but buy again every day of the week. Uh, Castle and Key, 2022, and this was their batch one, 49% alcohol. And I think I paid a shameful like 60, 70 dollars for this one because I was chasing and I was chasing the hype. I remember that hype train with Castle and Key? Yeah, that went downhill quite fast, didn't it? Hopefully they can get to doing great things. However, this ball was not one of those. This is a pass from me. I feel they make some good stuff with their rise and whatnot. Maybe I need to try them again on a bar, but this burnt me for the rest of the year. A pass from me. We have George Remus Straight Bourbon Whiskey Cast Strength coming in at 62.8% ABV or 125.6 proof. This is good value for money because again, a cast strength uh, straight bourbon whiskey from MGP. Uh, I would say a one-time thing. I wasn't the greatest fan. If you're someone who likes a spicier bourbon, like a Booker's or something like that, this will be right up your street. But for me, I like a little something a little softer, sweeter, with a lot of wood, something a bit more balanced. However, this is a bit more of a spice cinnamon bomb. So, so maybe like a one-time. I enjoyed it for what it was, uh, but I wouldn't buy it again. And I wouldn't pass on it for the first time. So I think it's worth a one-time. And then lastly, after all these bottles that we've gone through, we have Knob Creek. And this is a single barrel select. This is from Argonaut Wine and Liquor. This is coming in at 120 proof or 60% ABV. Much like the one I got from Jim Bean, which I started with. This is a buy, um, a repeat buy. As you can see, I have had two on this. I think I thought I had three. I must have taken it over to someone's house. I thought I had finished three of these. However, for like $50, $60, it's worth it every time. Age statement on this guy was 10 years. A 10 year age they did Knob Creek for, 100, for uh, 50, 60 dollars over 120 proof, 60% ABV. It's a buy, buy, buy every day of the week. So that's all we have time for today, folks. Thank you for coming along on this journey. Hopefully we didn't go too fast or too slow, but that was all the balls that we managed to kill off in the Whiskey Cove that I kind of still have left here. And my wife is gonna be very happy that we were able to get them out of the Whiskey Cove. So what we'll do is we'll keep all the bottles until next year we'll do this video again. She is going to love me. So with that being said, as we drink through the world's whiskey one glass at a time, cheers.